I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, December the 8th. Brought to you in part by Bromogen Commodities. Tell you what, these these markets are getting scary, and uh, and as volatile as they can be, as big as these swings can be, you got to protect yourself through hedging. If you're not sure how to do that, get a hold of Candy Sullivan. Uh, go to her website, BromogenCommodities.com. Got contact information there. She can set you up an account, and then if, if something happens, uh, you get an urge or, or uh, you, you decide you need to do something, then you can do it once you have that account set up. It, it's not a big deal, but uh, go ahead and check out Bromogen Commodities. The beef and the board bull tumble uh, to start the day out on Monday, which is tough, but your cash feeders, uh, your calves especially, were, were better. And, and that's kind of the opposite as, we, as what we've seen here uh, the last few weeks as, as we've seen uh, your, your board going up and your, your feeders going down. But uh, I'm not sure why everybody got so excited about buying calves uh, on Monday, but uh, maybe it's because they got some of the bigger reputation deals coming. But like Oklahoma City, Oklahoma National Stockyards at 18,000 head of feeder cattle and calves, mostly calves, and the calves still sold higher. Now I'm not sure if they made it all through the whole night that way or not. It's awful late here on Monday when I'm doing it, but uh, they'll be they'll be up all night selling those cattle, and I'm not sure, uh, you know, if, if they held it. That it would be impressive that they were able to hold it that long uh, through that big big run. But uh, they'd gotten through the bulk of them, and uh, and holding the market higher. Uh, I talked to Jack Harrison and uh, Callaway Livestock there in Kingdom City, Missouri. His calf market was sharply higher. He couldn't believe how many guys were coming out for him. Now, where, where are they getting this demand? Uh, we know we don't have much vacancy in our feedlots. And I'm not saying that, uh, that our bigger feeding cattle are selling all that well. In fact, we saw several sales where they were kind of backing off a little bit. Just no place to put them anymore. And you think, well, where are they going to put the calves? There's no place to turn those out. But uh, there are some guys that kind of dry winter those calves and just get them ready for early spring turnout. And I think that's what we're seeing on some of these uh, best uh, reputation calves uh, that were selling so high here to start the week out. And, you know, guys, you know, you think, well, why would they already be buying them for, for early spring grass? Because there's not any whenever we get to spring grass because no, we don't have near enough fall calvers. So we've got to take these, these lighter end of these late springborn calves and buy them and then just kind of creep them along trying not to get them too fleshy and just keep them healthy and keep them going good and then they'll be raring to go whenever it comes uh, spring turnout time but uh, you know your uh, your feed feed cost worries are big and you hear everybody talking about that the big dogs are talking about that now uh, worrying about feed costs and and uh, the people aren't thinking that this corn is gonna uh, back off anytime soon uh, you know, uh, if, if indeed we get a, a Biden inauguration here, uh, we're likely to get some goodwill out of, uh, out of Asia. Uh, in China especially, we, we'll get some goodwill buying out of them because uh, he's their buddy and, and they know they can go ahead and take the world over uh, once he's in there and lets them run over the top of us and everybody else. But they're going to come in here. Uh, they've been starving. They've depleted just about every other customer that they have for both uh, animal proteins and for grains. So uh, they're likely going to come in, and they know they've been coming in, come in already this week buying up a lot of grain. But uh, we'll see some, some big shipments of beef uh, more than likely heading that way, and it's going to be kind of a, a positive thing. Uh, even though, you know, so many of us would have liked to, for things to turn out the other way, we can't disregard uh, the places where it's going to help, and that's one of them. But uh, your, your beef trade for last week or your, your fat cattle trade for last week uh, was uh, down and was very disappointing whenever you think you're going to gain some money and you end up losing it. But box beef cutout values are tumbling hard. You know, I said that on the get-go there. And, and, and these packers are going to be hard to trade with. They are losing ground big time on the price that they get, the wholesale beef price. And it was down big on a Monday and decent movement for a Monday, even though we don't normally see that much, but down hard, hard. And I'm telling you what, it's probably going to get uglier 
uh, as we go through the end of this year. Uh, they're already saying that they're not going to slaughter a whole lot uh, through the holidays there. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to fill their obligations with uh, contract sales of meat out front, but uh, we're expecting them not to get too aggressive here through the holidays because they're not making as much money as they like to make. They're still making some, but they're going to be hard to trade with, guys. And uh, in Lava to lose some more ground here uh, until we get uh, through all the holidays, probably, and get going again in a new year that we hope is a hell of a lot better than the last one we had. Let's talk about the board on Monday. December live cattle futures down 87 cents at $108 even. February down 137 at 111.02. Going out from there on your live cattle contracts, they were down 80 to down 102. January feeder cattle down $1.97 at 137.80. March down 127 at 138.15. They were all down hard. Going out front on your feeder cattle, they were down 107 to 147. Your weighted average on last week's negotiated trade out of your five area feeding region uh, fed cattle 74,600 head uh, for last week. That compares to 73,300 head the week before and 71,200 head same week a year ago. So kind of typical and not as many as we'd like to see. But uh, live sales and steers and heifers were pretty much uh, steady to mostly a dollar lower by the time we finished the week. They range from 106 to 112. Your weighted average on uh, live sales of steers was 109.75, but your weighted average on uh, on uh, live heifers was actually 110.16, so it was over buck ten. But uh, that weighted average on steers of 109.75 was down a, uh, 52 cents from the previous week. Dress sales, steers and heifers from 170 all the way up to 178.50. We've got a few outlets out there that are paying premium uh, for top quality product. Uh, and so imagine that. And, and we'd like to see more of that. But it's not enough to really pull our weighted average up. It just gives us a wide spread. But your dress sales were steady to $2 lower. And so we lost ground there. Weighted average on dress steers, 172.29. Uh, that was down... Uh, 108 a dollar eight from last week's weighted average but uh, dressed heifers uh, actually sold better than that 172.87 on the weighted average there but you look at that uh, 172.29 on steers 172.87 on heifers your formula net price dressed on steers was 178 and so uh, you know it just doesn't hardly seem fair at all and you think, my gosh, what are we going to do? You know, we're you uh, guys that are feeding cattle, everybody, you know, we say everybody has a boss. Guys that are feeding cattle, their boss is the packer. Uh, you know, literally the guys that are in these formulated contract deals. But even you guys that are selling cash, because we're at their mercy. They absolutely dictate what, what happens here. And, uh, and and like some guys will, will tell you, they said, you know, as as, as poor as the, as the fat cattle market is, it could be worse. All they'd have to do is refuse to give uh, that much and, and somebody would start taking it and you'd have to take it if you didn't want to get hung up there. But uh, disappointing trade week last week in your fed cattle. But nationwide negotiated, they sold 89,100 head, uh, negotiated formula 255,700 head. So uh, that's, that's our problem right there. We just don't sell enough uh, negotiated cash. Why don't we mandate a minimum requirement? Huh? Who to think it? Well, you guys, if, if you're worried about this, you want something to do, quit supporting uh, the organizations that don't support minimum negotiated cash trade and start supporting the ones that do. We've got to have it. I don't know how much longer we can keep going like this, but it, it won't be five years. I guarantee you that. Uh, now, nationwide, I told you negotiated trade, 89,100. Of that, about 19% was for the two to four week delivery, and you would expect that uh, kind of during your holiday period here, but about 17,200 head of those uh, for two to four week delivery. Negotiated grid that everybody's hanging their hat on, only 25,000 of those, about 10% of your formula sales, and just uh, that's not going to cut it, guys. Box beef cutout values, I told you they were sharply lower. Choice cuts, 230.80, down 422 on Monday's session. Selects, 209.48, down 803.
talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction. Late in the day on Monday, sitting at 136.87, down 70. And I told you those bigger cattle just not selling very good. Where, the, where we saw the higher prices was almost entirely on calves. So we did sell some bigger cattle pr pretty good, but uh, with heavy, heavy receipts uh, in the southern plains, you're, you're going to lose ground on your real-time index. Oklahoma National Stockyards, like I mentioned, 18,000 head. You compare that to 10,200 last week. 14,800 same week a year ago that is a huge run that is great I'm glad to see the stockyards getting that that's your nation's cattle market early in the week right there and it's just good to see them getting that many cattle in there and I tell you what since Kelly took over there it's just uh, it's got a whole new uh, vibe about it and I tell you what it's uh, it, people are excited all the commission firms are digging and uh, and they're getting some buyers in there and they're doing some new things uh, they kind of had an Angus special Angus influence special on Monday had a lot of top quality all black hided cattle in there of course that's going to bring some of your northern interests in there and whether they come down or just called in an order uh, it helped the market on those and we saw some stick out sales and they did pretty well but uh, for the most part, your feeder cattle sold steady in Oklahoma City on Monday. Didn't have a lot of big feeders, you know, true yearling type feeders, but a good steady market in there. And if it held all the way through the end, which I really doubt it did, uh, you know, that would be pretty impressive. But steer calves steady to four bucks higher, heifer calves steady to firm. So that's a heck of a sale on heavy, heavy receipts. Oklahoma National Stockyards. How about Joplin Regional Stockyards? 10,300 head there. That's nothing to sneeze at. Steady to $3 lower for the most part and spots $4 lower and, and kind of throughout. They just, you know, they had such good sales last week, had so much energy last week and, uh, you know, and they had the wean back special and all that. But this trend is still back to Monday's regular sale, but uh, steady to, you know, about $3 lower for the most part there in Joplin. Now, get up to Callaway Livestock Center, that's uh, up there in the center part of Missouri, and they have got really, really uh, fancy cattle that come in there at times when they get their reputation deals in there. Those are some of those calves that guys want to buy, kind of hold over through the winter, and then turn them out like in the Flint Hills and places like that. Really, really top kind of cattle. Callaway Livestock Commission, or Callaway Livestock Center, Kingdom City, Missouri, they had over 3,000 head of feeder cattle. That is a big run for them. Uh, and then they probably sold cows half the night too. But uh, a lot of good calves sold sharply higher. And you look at this automated market report out of there, and you can view and bid that sale on DV auction every Monday. Uh, you know, look how, how much higher those were. And they had a good sale last week, so that's a pretty good comparison. But, uh, you know, like I, uh, I said, Jack Harrison told me it was the really good calves, the really reputation cattle that were that were uh, bringing those prices that much higher. How about another place that sold calves really well? Faith Livestock Auction, Faith, South Dakota, 8,000 head there. Uh, and and uh, they hadn't had any specials lately, but look at some of these uh, weighted averages on some of your bigger weight groups that the best tested on the steers. 1,485 head of four weight steers, average 460 at 187.53. Almost 2,500 head of five weight steer calves, average 555 at 168.04. 1,355 head of six weight steer calves, average 640 at 156.36. And the biggest spread of heifers, which guys are keeping some heifers back because they've, they've sold off a lot of cows. They called pretty deep up there. 1116 head of five weight heifer calves, average 548 at 152.86. Uh, don't forget about Wahoo Livestock Auction, Wahoo Livestock Sales there at Wahoo, Nebraska. They've got a special here today on Tuesday. It's a precondition wean calf special there. Got a lot of reputation, uh, local consignments around there. You can view and bid that sale at Wahoo, Nebraska on dvauction.com on Tuesday. How about some uh, stick out deals? Sioux Falls Regional Livestock, Worthing, South Dakota, 126 head of 1,135 pound steers. Big steers bring 132.50. Wow, that is big. And that, that's not much time to cheapen those cattle back up. 
How about Faith, South Dakota? That's our top quote. Zach Tran, top quote of the day out of Faith Livestock Auction. 94 head, 600 pound steers bring 171.50. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.